already have been encouraged by the singing this morning, and by the, the playing, I should say, not singing, we're getting ready to sing, but uh, praise the Lord for the Lord's day today. God is good, God is in control, God is on the throne, and we have much to be thankful for this morning. I hope that you come ready to be encouraged and ready to be an encouragement to others as well. Let's go on and start out with our theme verses. Psalm 37, 1 through 7. I hope that you've been able to, to work on these verses a little bit throughout the week. Psalm 37, 1 through 7. We'll say these verses together. Psalm 37, 1 through 7. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the new day. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Do want to remind everyone that tonight at 6 o'clock we do have our Adult Bible Fellowships and Youth Sunday School. Uh, we do praise the Lord for the good retreat that a few of our young men were able to go to. And uh, a couple of our guys here were able to counsel at Joshua and Shem. And so maybe tonight, uh, between those five, there'll be um, maybe some that would like to give a testimony of something that uh, the Lord um, you know, taught you through His Word, or maybe a good reminder of something that, uh, that the Lord reminded you of through the preaching of, his, of God's Word this past weekend. But they were tired. At least I know uh, uh, the boys were. I don't know about you guys, but uh, they were ready to hit the sack uh, last night, that's for sure. And that's a good thing. So I want to remind everyone, Wednesday night we are having our Bible study. We're currently going through the book of 1 John. So we're in 1 John chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. I want to invite everyone to come. It's a great time. The adults meet upstairs uh, for... 20, 25 minutes for a devotional from God's Word, and then we uh, take prayer requests, and then uh, the men break up with the men, the ladies with the ladies, and we bear one another's burdens, as Galatians 6, 2 says. We encourage everyone to come, and uh, it's, a, it's a real encouragement, the middle of the week, it's a, a refreshing time, so uh, again, if you're at all able to be here, I really want to encourage you to. Well, this Friday, we've been looking forward to this for some time now. Uh, everyone who is able uh, is going to go to Buddy and Mary Oshel's home. And again, if you need help with that address, uh, please let me know about that. But we're going to meet there at 6.30. You know, Mary, for the last uh, few years, have been, has been working on diamond painting. And maybe some of you know what that is, but just Google it, you'll find out. But diamond painting, and she, does, she has done a lot of these paintings. In fact, I have one in my office. She gave one to me. So uh, I know that you will enjoy uh, seeing Buddy and Mary and really just uh, being amazed at these diamond paintings. They're really quite beautiful. And I tell you, when the light and where they are in that living room, you know, they have some big windows. The light just hits on these paintings and it really just makes them sparkle, I guess, like diamonds. So anyway, uh, we're going to be an encouragement to them. I hope you'll be able to come. Um, We'll sing, and uh, really we'll sing, but we'll also just have a chance to talk to them. And uh, maybe some of you that have never met Buddy and Mary uh, would be able to come and maybe get to meet them for the first time. Buddy is our treasurer, and uh, just a few years ago he, he retired from being um, one of our deacons. He was a deacon for, I believe, 42 years, if I'm not mistaken, 42 years. So uh, I know that you would love to meet Buddy and Mary, so please come out. Everyone is welcome to come th again this Friday at 6.30. I want to remind everyone that next Sunday, Pete Wright and his family will be presenting little things of great significance. And we've had Pete come before, and uh, the family's always such a great blessing to us. So again, that will be next Sunday. There are some brochures in the lobby. Uh, if you'd like to take uh, one or two or three of those, and I uh, invite others to come. Thirty-two as our first song. How many were in the squall on Friday? And that brawl, squall. <laughs> I was. I, I, I'm with uh, other companies, our deliver range 
sweet, small, ale, whatever, but the UPS guys are the true delivery guys. <laughs> They're out there in the rain, sweet, snow, and hail. And how many heard the boom and saw the lightning? It was boom and lightning. So it was thunder, snow, and lightning, and, and the wind, and all kinds of good stuff. But uh, anyway, today we sing about God. This is we sing and praise and worship God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All praise to Him who reigns above. We'll sing the first, second, and last as we stand and sing. Blessed be the name. First, second, and last. chapter, Proverbs chapter 4. Solomon is writing, Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, thinking now about his father David, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. In other words, they won't be hampered or hindered. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. 
turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know, uh, they know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all the flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Our Father, we thank you so much for the blessings already from today. Lord, your goodness, your mercies that are new every day, the blessing of being here surrounded by those that love you, those that are for you, those that want to follow you. Lord, we, we have the privilege today of bringing the Word of God with us into this building. Uh, we ask God that you would help us to truly count our blessings, name them one by one. Father, we also thank you today that Jim was able to be with us. We pray for those that, uh, that are still not able to be with us. We pray that you would help them to continue to heal. We thank Lord of Gail and her upcoming surgery. And we pray, Father, that in your perfect will, uh, that that surgery would be able to be moved up so she can have that sooner rather than later. Father, we also continue to pray for Clarence and Doris. We pray, God, that you would encourage them both and that we would be able to, uh, to see them again soon. Father, we look forward to what you're going to teach us through the Word. Uh, we thank you already for uh, the, the song that we've been able to sing, the encouragement just from that and the words there. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with those that were able to go to the retreat uh, this past weekend. We ask, God, that you would continue to to just uh, help those that went to, to think about the words that they heard uh, from the preacher. We pray, God, that we would all just desire to, to be ready to hear, even today, and then to be ready to follow you and your perfect will for our lives. Father, we do thank you for our missionaries. We thank you for the odds that we ask God that you would continue to meet their needs, uh, encourage them, keep them close to you, remind them that you love them and that uh, you are for them and you have called them there. Father, we pray that you would give them the strength they need, especially Brother Yacht, that you would help him to be uh, strengthened in his body and in his mind as well. Uh, Father, we also thank you for Scott and Robin Jones. We pray for them, that you give them direction, that you would continue to give them uh, guidance as you have promised to. Uh, help them, Lord, to, to just continue to be a blessing to all of the churches uh, in, in our state. And in our state today, we want to pray for our Church of the Week. We pray for Northport Community in Kenosha. We thank you for this uh, ministry in a, really an inner, inner city, inner city work. So we pray for uh, Pastor John and his wife, Linda Jameson. We ask that you would protect them. Uh, we ask that you would continue to give them uh, the burden to reach uh, the, the people that you have called them to serve and minister to there in Kenosha. Lord, Please provide for all of their needs, we pray. And we also uh, pray that you would be with other countries um, in the world that uh, do not have the freedoms that we have. Today we want to remember uh, the believers in Uganda and the believers in North Korea. And we pray, Lord, that they would continue to let their lights shine uh, before others. We pray that you would give them many great opportunities, give them boldness to speak uh, the truth to others. Father, we also pray for uh, those uh, in leadership and authority. Uh, we ask God that you would please be with our president, President Biden. We pray for him that he would uh, be saved, that you would just work a miracle of salvation in his, in his heart and life. We pray for Vice President Harris, that she too would be saved. We pray for our governor 
you would also work in his heart, Lord. Uh, use, use others who have an opportunity uh, to, to be around him. And use your word especially. We know that you are able and your word does not return void. Father, we also pray that you would be with uh, those who are in the military. We think today of Anthony and Jacob and James, that you would keep them safe. Help them, Father, to, to think about you today, to, uh, to remember you, to take the word of God out and read it. And again, we pray that you would be with Bible-believing chaplains today, that you would help them to have a great opportunity to speak to our, uh, our troops, those in the military, uh, men and women, we pray that they would have a, a great opportunity just to uh, to give the gospel, to give the good news to others, and we pray that many would would turn from their sin and trust Christ alone for salvation. Father, thank you for calling us to serve here in Fort Atkinson. Thank you for our city. We pray, Lord, that we would continue to to shine right here where you want us to shine. And we pray, Lord, that our light would be bright. And we ask God that we would continue to to know and understand the, the, the truths of the Great Commission, that we are to go and, and make disciples of all nations. And so, Father, we ask that you would help us to be concerned with those around us, to be concerned with our neighbors enough to talk to them, uh, enough to build relationships with those we come in contact with in this town and also in the outlying communities. So, Father, give us those opportunities. Help us to take those opportunities and Help us, Lord, to look forward to what you're going to do because it is the good news. And so the good news is powerful. It works. It is the gospel, the power of God unto salvation. And so, Father, help us to know that you are able to save to the uttermost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Two hundred ninety-eight is our next song. We're going to sing a song. Two hundred ninety-eight. And I'd like to sing all four stanzas of this, of course, with me. But um, we'll start out, uh, ladies on the first, and then everybody on the chorus, and then everybody in the second, and then men on the third, everybody on the chorus, and then everybody on the fourth. Hopefully I didn't confuse you. Ladies on the first, men on the third, and everybody on the first, and the second, and the fourth. So. Shady Green Passions, ladies first.
295, 295, he leadeth me. And we'll sing the first, second, and last of this song, and everybody's singing. First, second, and last.
so much. Children may be dismissed to Children's Church at this time. So I knew that the ladies were going to be singing today, but I did not know what they were going to be singing until yesterday. And so I asked my wife uh, what they were singing, and uh, she told me. And uh, I think you'll see that, you know, I didn't know they were singing that, but I, in, the, in the meantime, the Lord was working this message on my heart. So I think you'll see that the two kind of dovetail nicely. So I, I just praise the Lord. He often does that. And I uh, thank the Lord for, uh, for working that song out, uh, even with, with this theme that we're looking at. Am I going down the right path? Am I going down the right path? Well, let's turn, turn again in our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and we take a break for uh, today and next week, of course, since we have Pete Wright coming. So Proverbs, Proverbs means to be like, to be like. So it's really a, a book of comparisons, and uh, it would be very difficult for, for any pastor, I think, and it would for me, to preach just verse by verse through the book of Proverbs, because... Uh, you really have to preach the book of Proverbs topically. And so really that's what we're, we're looking at today about right path. So uh, this is a really more of a, a, of a topical type of a message. And two of the themes that are fairly popular, especially in Proverbs chapters 1 through 9, are the themes of wisdom and folly. Wisdom and folly. Uh, some would say that Proverbs is just for the young man, and, and that's not so. The book of Proverbs is for, for all Christians. It pertains to all of believers, and it has to do a lot with the issues of life that we will all face. The book needs to be read right, and reread over and over, just like all of the other books of the Bible, for really a basic understanding of how God wants us to live in this <coughs> present world, in this evil uh, world that we live in. And so the Bible, this book, actually, the book of Proverbs, actually uh, describes that evil. It describes the evil that, ab that abounds, that superabounds. It describes it in various ways. Proverbs also reminds us that there are consequences for our sin. Let's just go back to Proverbs 1. We'll be <coughs> looking at chapter 4 in just a moment. So I mentioned that two of the themes throughout this book, especially 1 through 9, are the, the themes of wisdom and the theme of folly. Look in chapter 1 and verse 7. I think most would uh, say that this would be uh, the theme verse of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fear the Lord, that awe, that respect that you have for God to where you want to learn more about Him. You want to grow in your walk with Him. You're wanting to be wise in the things of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, that is the beginning of the knowledge that God has for you and me through His Word. But here is really a good description of who the Bible calls a fool in verse 7. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So with wisdom uh, and, and other similar words, knowledge, understanding in the book of Proverbs, you have wisdom, you have knowledge, you have understanding, you have words like discretion, and you also have obedience. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. And of course, this is kind of like, in Proverbs, of course, Solomon wrote 29 of the chapters here, and, and a little bit later on in chapter 31, and so this is kind of in the middle of his life. We know from his life that he didn't end well, right? 1 Kings chapter 11 tells us of all the foreign wives that he married, and they turned his heart. That phrase is used several times in those verses in 1 Kings 11. They turned his heart from the things of the Lord, where he followed actually after their gods, their foreign gods. And so here he is in the middle of his life saying all of these good things, and we know, and we know that even Rehoboam, his son, did not follow his father's advice as well. Here we have the book of Proverbs though, and here we know from verse 7 that this is the beginning of knowledge, that is the awe, the respect that we have for the Lord. So wisdom, knowledge, understanding, instruction, obedience, discretion, 
And so folly, you have the word fools here in verse 7, folly would be everything opposite of wisdom. So those that walk in wisdom, that are going to walk by the Spirit, by the Spirit's control, not by the flesh, will want to go down the right path. They will want to go down the right path. The foolish ignore what God is trying to do. The foolish get involved with those that are trying to pressure them into doing something that is clearly against what God wants. Thankfully, Proverbs goes through and kind of bullet points what some of the different forms of evil are and how they are made known. For example, in Proverbs 6 and verse 24, there is the, the evil woman to guard against, the one that will seduce someone who is uh, someone who is naive. There is in Proverbs 2, there is evil company to guard against. Even in Proverbs 12 and verse 12, there is the actual prophet of the evil uh, to, to guard against. And so we know that as children of God, we can always rest assured that God does have a plan. He does have a plan for our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but that plan does not include sin. That plan does not include choosing our own way. Uh, that plan includes following Him. Letting Him guide. I want to just have us look for a moment at Proverbs 2. In a few moments we'll look at Proverbs 3 and then we'll be in chapter 4. Look in Proverbs chapter 2. Well, let's start with verse 8. Here's a wonderful reminder that God wants to be, wants to preserve the way of His children. That He is concerned with how we live. That God is concerned about what you are doing in your life. That God is, is very concerned about maybe what you're looking at. The things you're you're seeing with your eyes, whether good or bad. That God is very concerned, and Proverbs 4 said this, right? He's very concerned with where you're going, where you're choosing to go, what friends you're choosing to hang around with. God is intimately concerned about these matters. He's not a, as one theologian described him, He's not a distant deity, all right? Now, He is near. He is near to His children. So look in chapter 2 and verse 8. He keepeth, uh, actually we should start back with verse 6, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. We have God's word, that's how we get God's wisdom. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. And then look at verse 8. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. He wants us to do right. He wants us to make godly decisions. He wants us to be on guard against those that are trying, as in Proverbs 6, the evil woman, to, to try to get us to do evil. He wants us not to be naive. He wants us to be wise as we are opening God's Word and, and letting God speak to us through the Spirit of God inside of you. He wants you to follow the right paths and go down the right paths. He wants you to choose that which is right. He wants us, God wants us to do right. And it's amazing how God uh, provides. David even said this, right? In Psalm 37, 27, I've been young and now I'm old and yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. David just gives us a reminder of what I just have been talking about, how God is intimately involved with our lives. And here in David, in Psalm 37, 25, uh, God provides for me. God meets my needs. But Jesus also said in Matthew 6, 33, to seek first the kingdom of God. Now look in chapter 2, verse 12. To deliver thee, all right? Again, when we apply wisdom, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction, right? And there's, there's a real element of pride there, by the way, in, in Proverbs 1-7. I think the last, uh, 
part of that verse as an element of pride. I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to disregard the wisdom from God's Word. I'm going to disregard maybe even the wisdom of my Father. Okay? Look in chapter 2 and verse 12. To deliver thee, talking about wisdom and discretion again, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From verse, verse 12. From the man that speaketh Froward things. He speaketh wicked things. And here is a characteristic of those that, that do. They leave, verse 13, who leave the paths of uprightness. Paths. Alright, that's in the title, right? Am I going down the right path? What are we talking about? When we say the word path, it's simply just a metaphor for the ways of life. The ways of life. Am I going down the right path? Or even am I going down the right paths, right? And so there are some that would leave that path, right? That would leave the paths of righteous uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Look at verse 20, chapter 2, verse 20. Here's what God wants for His children. The word paths is used again in verse 20. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men. And we read about that, of course, in chapter, in chapter 4 as well. And in chapter 4 is one mentioned, verses 14 through 17, one of the three um, times that Solomon mentions uh, company and the company that we keep. It's also mentioned in chapter 1, uh, verses 10 through 14. We won't read it, but it's also mentioned in chapter 2. As we've read a little bit already from verses 12 through verse 15. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. There are those that will make us stray. There is company that is not godly company. We've got to understand that. We've got to understand that there is the right path that God wants us to go down, and that really would be number one. There is the right path, but there's also wrong paths, right, that God does not intend for us to go down. And so we must be on guard even with the company that we keep, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. So... Now let's turn to the one that everyone is familiar with, Proverbs chapter 3, right? Everyone knows of Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. I mean, we probably memorized these two verses uh, when we were young. I know I did. But I, I think we're leaving out a very good verse. And if, we just, if we just know 5 and 6, don't forget verse 7, right? Don't forget verse 7. So in Proverbs chapter, um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, again, is a reminder that God wants to direct our paths. The end result of our paths, being guided and directed by God, should encourage us. So let's look at those verses again. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. That starts, of course, you have to first of all have that relationship uh, with God. Uh, you want to draw near to Him, and He will draw near to you. James 4 tells us that. So there's that personal relationship with Him. So it's not just to acknowledge, just kind of a tip of the hat to Him. No, it's, it's, it's a deep, intimate knowledge in all of your ways. All right? we, we, we think of that when we just say, they were, uh, he or she acknowledged me. All right? That's not the meaning here. All right? That's not the meaning of this text. It is an intimate knowledge. And what does it say? In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. Get to know Him. What does He want me to do? Where does He want me to go in life? How is, what does He want me to, uh, to go after, to run after hard? All right? In all your ways, acknowledge Him. You know, and obviously, we have to be on guard against what others have said, right? What may be the ungodly, those that do not know God, have encouraged us to do. No. In all your ways, look, if you're trusting in Him from verse 5, you're going to be very, very concerned about what does God want me to do. Regardless of how much something pays, what does God want me to do? 
regardless of what my mom or dad has said, you know, and maybe they're not even believers, okay? I have to be very careful. What does God want me to do? False motives aside, what does God want me to do? In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He, don't you love this, right? He's intimately acquainted with all of our ways, Psalm 139. He, he wants to direct our paths. So He wants us going down paths then that are pleasing to Him. He wants us to make godly decisions. Acknowledge Him. Or, when we make a decision, when we have some something going on where something has to be decided on, is God even in the picture, right? Or do we push Him behind? Just on the back burner, so to speak. And if, if I need His help, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring Him out. Acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Here's why I think verse 7 should really be included. <laughs> because we often are wise in our own eyes. We're prideful. We say, no, I'm going to do it my way. We say, no, God, I want to do it this way. This pays more money. This gets me more popularity. This does whatever, right? That's leaning on our own understanding. That's leaving God totally out of the picture, right? He wants to direct our paths, but we will not go down those right paths that He has for us. We will not go down those right paths that He has for us. If we, in pride, do not fear the Lord and do not depart from evil. So that's why the encouragement, the command, be not wise in thine own eyes. So often we are, right? So many verses in the Bible that have to do about pride. We know from Proverbs 6, it's a sin that God hates. One of the sins listed in the very beginning, God hates pride. We know from Jonah, he tried to go down his own path. He did not agree with the compassion and the mercy of the God that he loved and served. But he did not agree with the fact that Ninevites should be saved, right? You're kidding, God, right? I mean, what is that? That is leaning on your own understanding. Uh, that is being prejudiced, right? Leaning on your own understanding, the idea that God can't save these people, or maybe even more, that God shouldn't save these people. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 encourages us to trust Him more and lean on our own thoughts and opinions less. God wants to direct or straighten our paths. Now, I love this word, um, uh, direct or straighten, because it has the meaning of travel made straight by clearing or leveling the road. That's the meaning of direct or straighten. All right, that's what God wants to do. He shall direct thy paths. What does it mean? He will clear or level the road. Now, I know we haven't had a ton of snow uh, yet this season, but perhaps some of us have had that experience, and usually it's a good one, I think. <laughs> if the roads are really, really bad, and you just happen to be behind a plow, that's plowing, all right, and, and maybe salting, all right? And we, we've heard stories. I, it's been a blessing, right? If you are on a bad road and all of a sudden, you know, you're like, I can't see, I should stop, my wipers aren't working, all these things. You know, your life's going before your eyes and all of a sudden a plow is out there and you're behind him. And he's, what is he doing? He is clearing the way. He is leveling the way for you. All right, he is taking care of the snow, taking care of the ice for you so you don't have to, right? So that, I think, is maybe a small picture of what God wants to do for our paths. We have to obey Him, right? We have to obey Him. We have to say, I'll follow you. I'm not going to say, forget you, plow. I'm driving in this cornfield, right? No, we've got to stay on the path that God wants us to stay on. Stay behind the plow. 
God, I'm not, I want to follow you. He is the good shepherd. Those that love him, John 10, will follow him. Will follow his perfect will for their lives. Well, let's look at chapter 4 just for a few moments. Chapter 4. So in chapter 4, we have a, a few different usages of the word paths. Again, the way of life, the metaphor of, of life that we have been that we've been talking about here. So there, again, there's clearly a wrong path. There is clearly a right path. So here is Solomon, again, going back in the opening verses of chapter 4, recalling his own father, David, recalling his father's advice. And so look, if you would, at, at verse 11. Verse 11. I mentioned it would be more of a topical message. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. There's the word again. I have led thee in the right paths. The right paths. There it is, mentioned again. Now think about it in your life. You know, um, we have all, at times, gone down wrong paths. And there have been consequences. And even as I've already mentioned in the case of Jonah, there's often chastening by God's good, loving hand. Where he's like, you know what? You went down the wrong path. You need to get on this path. I'm going to do this to you, all right, to hopefully work in your life, work in your heart to get you to get on the right path. Now, Jonah finally obeyed God, right? I mean, he took the great fish and the storm and all of these, these things like that to finally get him to know that, you know what? God wants me back on the right path. And so, here in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 11, I have led thee. This is what God wants to do using His Word, using wisdom, the instruction of God's Word. He wants to lead us on the right path. So that, you know what that means? If we are going to choose to go on the right path, and again, for, for believers, that means actually choosing God's way, first of all, of salvation. All right? Broad is the, the road, the way, the path that leads to destruction. Okay, but narrow is the path that leads to everlasting life. Jesus alone is the one who can save you from your sin. But if we're going to clearly go down the right path, that does mean rejecting some wrong desires, rejecting some wrong goals even. Let me just mention just a few of those from the book of Proverbs again. Again, rejecting wrong desires and wrong goals. Okay, here is one that we should reject. This is a wrong path. It's the goal of pleasure, right? The goal of self-gratification. That would be one, right? There's a right path, there's a wrong path. A wrong path would be, first of all, the goal of pleasure or self-gratification. Entertaining ourselves, right? To death, right? And being more concerned about that more than what does God want me to do in my life. Proverbs 21 and verse 17, you don't have to turn there, but it says, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Now you think about this. Some ways, just think in your mind, some ways that uh, you can reject this even in, in a family situation, right? So he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. All right, so that is one wrong desire and goal that, that we need to reject. Self-gratification. I'm not going to do what God wants me to do. I'm just going to continue to love and pour my life into pleasure. Let me give you another one very similar to the first one. Materialism. Materialism. Proverbs 3, 23, I'm sorry, 23 and verse 4. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. And then Proverbs 23, 5. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. What are we focusing on? What path are we choosing? What paths are we choosing? So later in life, we know, I've mentioned this already, but 
In Ecclesiastes, Solomon would write this. So here he is in Ecclesiastes, Proverbs again, the middle of his life. Ecclesiastes, end of his life. I think that's important to keep in mind. Ecclesiastes 5.10. Here's what he says. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. In, in verse 12 of Ecclesiastes 5, and verse 12, sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him or allow him to sleep. That's a goal that needs to be rejected in the Proverbs. It's mentioned often, really. The desire or the goal of I want it all. I want more. And how often does that desire keep individuals from going down the right paths that God wants them to go down? I, mean, I, I want what's going to make me the most money. I want what's going to buy me the biggest... You fill in the blank, right? But godliness... Paul said in 1 Timothy 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Are we content to do what God wants? To say, Father, I will do your will. I will go down your path. I will understand that your paths are right. Your paths are good for me. You want me to seek those paths. I'll just mention two more quickly. I've already dealt a little bit with this one. Again, from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7. Another wrong desire or goal would be self-exaltation or, or pride. Whatever it takes to get myself lifted up, right? There's a lot in Proverbs about that. Proverbs 25, 27. It is not good for men to search their own glory. Not good for men to search their own glory. Proverbs 27, 2. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. Fourthly, another desire or goal to reject is what I've also already alluded to, companionship with ungodly people. I'm not talking about building redemptive relationships, which we encourage often. I'm not talking about talking to lost neighbors here. But letting ungodly people sway you letting ungodly people take you off of the right path and put you on the wrong path. Those are the people that we need to stay away from. Companionship with ungodly people. Proverbs 24.1 be, be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. The next verse, 24.2 For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. I mean... Don't you just love the brethren? Isn't that what John says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14? We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. It's proof. It's an indication that you are a Christian. You love being with one another. You love the brethren and the sisters, right? You love coming here. You love meeting. You love being together. It's the body of Christ. They're true believers. And so we know, John says that we pass from death spiritually into life, spiritual life, because we do love the brethren. He that, by the way, the rest of that verse says, he that loveth not his brother, well, he abides still in death. He abides still in death. What are some of the characteristics of those that follow God? I know that we have already received the encouragement to go down the right paths, Look at, look at verse 14. I want to give now some characteristics of those that don't follow God. Because look at verse 14 where it says, Enter not into the path of the wicked. So we've got to be on guard, right? We've got to know that there are people all around us. Some are going down God's paths, but obviously some are not. Enter not into the path of the wicked. That was the encouragement in Proverbs 5 and 6 for the young man uh, who was being seduced by this woman. Don't even go down her street. Right? Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Solomon mentions a few different characters in Proverbs of those that don't follow God. You're very familiar with these. I'll just mention them briefly. The simple 
are the naive. Uh, the naive or the simple are very easily misled. They're very easily misled. They lack, they lack wisdom. And that's what Proverbs 8, 5 says. Oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. Right? They often, the, the naive or the simple will often stumble into trouble. And that's why the Proverbs 22, 3 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil. And that's so important for Christians as well. That we're on guard. So a prudent man, a wise man, foresees the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. And a lot of times we don't know that the evil might be coming, right? Joseph didn't know it, all right, from God's Word. But when that evil was presented, he ran, right? He got out of that particular situation. The simple would be one a person who does not follow God. You know, is, so ask yourself, is, is that me? As a believer, it shouldn't be. But as a natural man, it might be. Those that are easily misled. The Bible calls the other one a fool. A fool, one who acts as if there's, there's no God. The fool is proud, we know that. Uh, the fool rejects God's instruction. The fool enjoys sin. So again, we're talking about someone who's clearly not saved. Thirdly, another person that the writer of Proverbs mentions is the scorner. Or, or you could say the scoffer. The scorner or the scoffer. So that's one who mocks sin. And he even mocks God and His judgment. A scorner will not accept correction. A scorner will not accept correction. Proverbs 15, 12. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. Neither will he go unto the wise. Okay? Pride. So we've got to be on guard that we don't have these characteristics. If we're wanting to go down the right path, the path that God has for us to go down, are we prideful? Are we looking at the wrong type of motives, desires, goals? Are we looking at those wrong things instead of saying, God, if you want me to do it, if you want me to go here, if you want me to do this, if you want me to get this job, I'll do it. Because God wants me to do it. Am I going down the right path? He also uses another term, the wicked are, are the ungodly. The wicked are the ungodly. Proverbs 21, 12. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked. The righteous man wisely considers the house of the wicked. We can learn from what paths we have perhaps taken in the past, right? And we can apply that to our present circumstances in life. Again, leaning not, relying, that's what, what, what the word lean means, relying not on our own understanding. And can't then we even plan, even for the, the future, from learning, from going down wrong paths? All right, Lord, I want to go down the right paths. You have forgiven me for going down this one path, however long ago it was. But now, Lord, I want to choose the right paths. Look in verse 18. Verse 18. But the path of the just, it says, is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. One commentator notes that this is the only passage in the Old Testament that pictures the gradual growth of the godly individual in the ways of God. And it's interesting, I think, right? Because verse 18 talks about the shining light. So the righteous, the, the, the condition that the righteous sh are shining brightly, right? His path then would be like the path uh, or like the light of the sun. You know, it starts out, you just see just a little bit, but then by, by high noon, you know, there it is in all of its glory, right? There's the, the full sun, the full light of the sun. So the light of verse 18 the light of verse 18 really um, is in great contrast with the darkness of verse 19, right? If the path of the just is as the shining light gets bigger and, and brighter and you're, you're growing in the Lord, you're wanting to do God's will, 
And, and that's going to continue to shine more and more until the Lord comes, until, until the perfect day. But the way of the wicked is as darkness. So this knowledge that for the godly man is continuing to grow, right? Throughout life. And there's that day kind of reaches the, the, the peak, if you will, when we actually come into the presence of God. But then you have the ignorance of the wicked. It's darkness. And it really, this phrase here indicates a, a deep darkness. A deep darkness. And so, verses 20 through 22, simply call in this chapter the Son, it would be for all of us, okay, to obedience. All right, what, what are we going to do? All right, stay on the right path. Look at what he says. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them, guard them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. And then the well-known verse, keep thy heart. The word heart means mind. Keep thy heart or mind with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So I appreciate so much the ladies singing the song uh, that they sang. And in the chorus, probably you picked up on this as well. But in the chorus, they say these words, His way is best. It leads to rest. Do you agree with that, that his way is best? Absolutely. Every Christian in here would. Are we choosing then to follow him, to go down his ways, to follow down his paths? The fathers, as the ladies have sung, the fathers plan for me. Verse 3 says, For well he knows the pathway that will lead to endless day. And it doesn't mean that there will not be those times of discouragement or trials. But this is God's will. And Paul was able to say that, right? I know that even though all of these things happen to me, I, I, I am following Him. He said in 2 Timothy, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Will we be able to say that? I, I want to be able to say that. It will mean us choosing the paths that God wants us to choose. It's not always spelled out in the Bible, perhaps. What school do I go to? What profession do I take? Uh, you know, on and on and on. But there is wisdom in the Scriptures. As we seek God's face, as we pray, as we say, God... I don't know what to do. Well, again, we're humbling ourselves. God, I, I need direction here. God, I want you to guide me. I don't understand what you want me to do. Seek God. Pray. Seek even godly counsel. That's scriptural as well. Wait on the Lord, right? There's verses about waiting on the Lord and He will strengthen your heart. But there are wrong paths that the Christian must reject. We must... We must see that, right? And so that's why Solomon said, ponder the way of your feet, right? All right, consider well. Think about what, where you're going, what you're doing. Ponder the path of your feet. Am I going down the right path? Is it the path that God wants? For a Christian, we have the Holy Spirit of God. We have God's Spirit within us. Who will, thank God... Let us know when we're going down the right, the wrong path. He will let us know when we're going down the wrong path. The conviction will come in. This is not where you should be. This is not what you should be doing. Get back on the path. That is the challenge from Solomon. That is the challenge for, for all of us as Christians to follow God and His perfect will for our lives. Let's pray. Father, the world is saying go down one path. The world is saying go down a path that perhaps leads to temporary prosperity. It leads to temporary satisfaction. Lord, may we, by your grace, see through all of that. 
And I pray, Lord, that we would <coughs> constantly say, what is it that you want me to do? Where is it that you want me to go? What decision do you want me to make here? Father, I pray that as your children, as Christians, that we would want to go down the paths that you would want us to go down. They do not involve sin. They do not involve wrong desires or wrong goals. Your paths are right. It doesn't mean that your paths are always free of danger. It doesn't mean that your paths are always free from, free from trials. But your paths are always right. So Lord, help us to love your paths to love your ways and to reject all of the other ways that you do not want us to go down. Lord, it is a matter of trust. It is a matter of simple obedience to you. Help us, Lord, to follow you. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed at this moment. Let's just take just a moment or two of, of silent prayer. And if the Lord has perhaps burdened you with uh, something from today's message. I want to just encourage you in these next few moments where we're just praying that you would just do business with the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you. He will. Ask Him to help you to stay on the right paths. Help Him to ask Him to help you to, uh, uh, to run to you and not to rely on our own understanding. It's a wonderful verse from Psalm 48, 14. This God is our God forever. He will be our guide even unto death. So at this time, let's thank the Lord for that, that He is our guide. He is our keeper. He is our shade. Let's ask Him to help us to stay on that right path. Let's pray. We love you, Father. Thank you for your love for us. Lord, help us to be followers of you. Help us to reject what we need to reject, to stay on the path that you want us to stay on. Lord, we're, we're so thankful to be called your children. We're so thankful to be able, through the blood of Jesus Christ, to be able to pray to you, to pray for wisdom from you. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sorry. If you haven't found it, 261, no trust and obey. For well, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Sing the first and the fourth. I know that's all stand the same. 261. First and the fourth. Sunday School and Youth Fellowships and Adult Fellowships, I should say. So have a great afternoon. And this, this time, Jacob, would you please dismiss us in prayer? Dear Father in Heaven, I thank you for uh, this Sunday, Lord. I thank you uh, for 
all that we learn from your work here, Lord. Lord, please let, uh, bless us as we go out and uh, uh, fellowship this afternoon, Lord. Give us safety as we drive and uh, help the evening service go out help us be able to learn much from your work. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.